bolt is back upright again so we can start finishing this off. I need, I need to really start hurrying on this because the weather is going to start turning cool here. It's the first part of October so I should have been done with this boat by now but uh, I've been taking my time and making a lot of extra videos. Uh, now we're going to start working now that we have the boat up and the skeg on. I really couldn't do anything with this until I got the skeg put on so I can get ready to put the hard, or hardware on for the uh, rudder, at least line it up and drill the holes and then take it off again so I can final paint it and then we'll put it on once the hull is painted. But I needed to get everything in place before I could do that. So now I've got my rudder hardware I got from Chuck Down Duckworks, but I did have to form this thing, take one of the flat ones and then turn it into a U for the uh, uh, so the pencil will fit in it. Uh, they don't make anything for like this on the grudgeon with they'll accept the pin. I don't know why they don't make something like that, and I can't you they don't make one for vertical uh, that I can lag into the the skeg uh, vertically. So uh, I've got to, I had to manufacture my own like I did for the OMP pot on the last haul I did. So I've got that, but I want to stiffen up this panel in here so I made a cutout. I took started out with a piece of paper and folded it in half and made some you know doodles on it and cut it out. And I come down to where I'm got something final. The uh, piece I have on the wood cutout isn't quite like this but uh, you know, kind of line it up and you'll see that I'm adding another piece of quarter inch ply to it so it'll make this section here a half inch thick. Uh, with the strength of the uh, rail on top and then this uh, slight bend with the, uh, the fillet and the tape on it will give me another stiff joint to bond bridge between. So, and then where the upper uh, grudgeon is going to go, I want my, my, the major part of my thickness and width. So that's where this little doodle in here comes in, this width in here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and get that mounted and then we'll go to the outside and I'll show you I need to make a little spacer because of the thickness of the rails and the distance between the um, pencil fits into the grudging here I've got a little bit of distance if I don't set it out uh, an eighth of an inch uh, shim uh, then I'll be banging on the uh, gunnels every time well actually not on the gunnels but on the, uh, the bling trim we're going to be putting on I may put a dimp, dimple in that as opposed to putting a shim underneath of this. We'll know when we come to it. Well, I have it finalized now. I just have to epoxy them on. Uh, one thing I did do was it's almost impossible to get both sides the same way. So, and it's easier too to make if you have a couple pieces that are about you know ten and a half inches long by about four by half by five inches wide and then just give yourself a nice shape and cut them out uh, like this and shape them that way otherwise you'll get off, off uh, arcs if you don't. So uh, I've got that in. I picked up some uh, new clamps. My local woodworker store had some Bessie uh, adjustable clamps on sale for like two dollars off each one of these little rascals. And these are really nice clamps. But I need my long ones to get the, the bottom end clamp down. So let's go ahead and uh, get into making clamps. You see me use a lot of clamps. Some of the ones on, on the gunnels and stuff are the ones that I made out of four layers of uh, plywood and just some leftover scrap plywood. I've made some out of some pieces of uh, oak I had. So if you have some good hardwood and the grain is tight and it's going in the correct direction and it's nice long grain, uh, the hardwoods are nice, they're easy to make them. But for the uh, laminated ones, I think, you know, if I have some pieces left over, I've got a little bit of epoxy left over and I have some of my little pieces cut out that are about the right size, I'll just slap them up, you know, some epoxy on them, whatever's left over in a jar and I don't want to waste or you know, uh, wipe up with a cloth and, and still waste. I'll smear it on the, those little uh, pieces and then I'll build up layers or else maybe I've got some uh, other pieces that are, this will be like two, uh, two clamps. I uh, usually try to get them about an inch and a half wide uh, and about five, yeah, what do we got here? About five and a half, five, six inches long, whatever you've got, whatever's handy with 
that you know is handy for you. Uh, and then I'll take like when I've used those, uh, made the cutouts for the hatches. They're usually half inch thick, so I'll take a couple of the uh, same size rings and I'll, I'll laminate those together. So that'll give me you know a full inch. And then I'll mark out. Can you see on there? Yeah, two clamps. Now I get some waste, but you know it's better than nothing else. And then I'll take some odd pieces and of uh, sizes and whatever and laminate them up too. So, but today we're going to uh, get in and finish off these ones that I need in order to hold the the bling trim on the sides uh, because I got to go down at least uh, eight inches, ten inches in the bow here to. to grab something close enough to the bow to hold it in place while I'm measuring it and, and then epoxying it on. So let me uh, reset up and we'll get in um, making a clamp. Because they're all the same. Once you do one, you've done them all. No matter how big they are. The clamps we're going to make today are they going to be the, the long ones I need to get down over the gunnels to hold the, uh, the trim in place. And they're about, uh, I got some um, half inch uh, maple backsplash from some counters, kitchen counters a neighbor had uh, some wood left over because he was a trim carpenter and I had some half inch uh, plywood I cut into strips and they're about an inch and five eighths by fourteens and then I put little little tabs out to you know the, about a little longer or wider than what the thickness of the rails are so I'll be able to come down and span the rails so but I've already got them pre-marked up at uh, three quarters of an inch and then another two inches down and then center line so now I'm going to drill holes uh, half inch holes half inch I'm using five sixteenths bolts and um, the half inch uh, holes give them enough room to move around that they don't uh, jam up as I'm, you're trying to thread them in and out so I'm going to drill a set of holes through this way and then through the sides and then put in the little um, those little toggle bolts that we use okay we're going to use our brace and bit with a half inch bit. And now I'm through to my backing wood. You can tell by the different colors of the uh, wood coming up which ones they are. So I've got those two holes drilled. Let me go ahead and do the other one and then we'll start working on the uh, vertical so holes here. We've got them on edge and then because the plywood is eight laminations you can you don't have to measure it to the center because you know where it's at. So we just keep her, keep her vertical and bore down all the way through again. And then if you want to sand the inside, just I took a, a piece of sandpaper and wrapped it up around my uh, my little ra or rasp wrap tail rasper, and then just swing it around like that, and it sands out the interior. And then with the top bolt, it has a nylock nut, a washer on both sides, and then the nut coming down. And for those that are really sharp, you'll say, why didn't he drill that hole there? <laughs> Every time I make clamps, the first one always gets that extra hole. And since I'm only making one, uh, that'll be there to remind me every time I look at that. You only need one, one hole per side, but they're staggered from side to side. Okay, I've got them the way they're supposed to be with the head of the bolt on either side. So this hole didn't need to be drilled and this one up here didn't need to be drilled. So just remember that when you make your own. Like I said before, I do this pretty much every time. I forget I only need one on each side. On the flat face, these always need two. So let me go uh, get some wood in and we can use this clamp. <laughs> 